Hey guys! Today I'm going to show you how to print and cut and I'm going to show you a print and cut hack. Um, I was trying to put together a learning binder for my daughter and uh, given what's going on in the world right now, um, I was looking to do this at home to give her some resources to uh, continue learning while she's at home. So I put together this binder and I'm going to show you um, how to print and cut these farm animals as well as print and cut the laminate. So I'm pretty OCD about the cut of these things. Um, when I cut by hand, I really try to make sure I get the best shape um, and cut out. So using my Cricut was perfect for this because I was able to actually get a perfect cut based on the file itself. So just a quick flip through if you want to see my learning binder so far. Uh, we've got colors here. These were all cut on the Cricut. Same thing with the laminate. It was laminated and then cut in the Cricut, which I will show you. I am missing the yellow. My daughter took that to play, so I'm not sure where that is right now. Uh, we've got shapes on this page, which are kind of fun. I made a counting cookie sheet for her, um, which is <laughs> really funny because she likes to eat those right now. Um, and then we've got the farm animals. So this page is what will be available on my blog. I will probably share uh, other pages as well. And uh, if you like this video so far, give it a thumbs up and I will know to continue making these types of videos. So let's head over to Cricut Design Space, um, grab the file from the website and I'll show you what we're going to do with them. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so to make our farm animals learning binder sheet, uh, we have two files that we're going to be playing with today. Let's go to upload. And I'm going to load in the farm animal pieces PNG file, okay? We're going to cut our animals first, and then I will show you the laminate hack right after. So let's load this up. And when you upload it, it's going to give you options here. Because you've loaded an image file, um, it's going to ask, do you want to keep it simple? Do you want it moderate, com moderately complex or complex? Now we want to keep all of our colors when we print, so we're going to go with complex and we hit continue. Here you can select and erase things if you need to. Um, this is really handy when you are loading in an, a, a file that's not very clean. So if I were to grab something from the internet and wanted to use, for example, only the tail of this chicken, then I could go ahead and uh, use the tools up here. So you've got select and erase, erase and crop. Um, and I could crop that out and clean that up to however I like it if it was not clean. Because my images were created by me, um, my images are pretty clean. So we don't need to, need to do anything extra here. We're just going to hit continue. Now it's giving you the option if you want to make it a print then cut image or just a cut image. So it's already done a silhouette for you, um, which is kind of neat. So when you upload a, um, a different image file, you can always use it as a cut file without having to do anything else with it. But we do want to print and cut this image. So we're going to go ahead and select that one. Now it should be in your library here and let's load that into our new project. So one thing we do need to do before we do anything else is to resize this. Okay. I tried to get it as close as possible when I was designing it, but it wasn't working out quite, quite the way I wanted. So you're going to need to go to the sizing here, which is for me, it's under more because my MacBook is the screen is a little small, so I don't have all the options laid out at the top, but you may have this on the top bar. If you don't, look for the more drop down um, and you'll see the size here. So on the size here, we're going to change this to 9.25. Okay. This is the maximum size that Cricut allows you to print and cut. Okay. 9.25. So we're going to put that in there. This is what I've designed it for. And... We don't need to do anything else. We can go straight to make it. Now you'll see that they put a nice little border on here for you. Okay. We do want to keep that border. 
and um, it that's what Cricut uses to calibrate its cut. Okay, so when you go ahead and hit continue, it's going to do some calibration when you put this on the mat and put it into your machine. You'll see that a little light will go on. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and hit continue. And now you can go ahead and send this to your printer. Okay, so when you click on this, so this allows you to select a printer that you're going to print this on. This is the one I'm using. It's my color laser printer. I highly recommend you buy a color laser printer. I use it for like everything. Um, and I love it. I love it so much. So um, yeah, this is the one I have. It saves on so much ink because it's color. Uh, you're going to want to select to add the bleed. This gives it a little bit of... Um, some edging so when it makes the cut it's not a sharp contrast if it's slightly off okay you'll see what I mean when we do the cut and then you go ahead and you hit print all right so let's head back over and I will show you um, a few things about the print and cut on the Cricut machine um, but yeah, once you load the machine here, mine is unplugged at the moment. <laughs> but once you hit the machine here, it'll tell you to go over to the machine and, and finish that cut on my Explore Air 2 here. Okay, so let's head back over and see how that turns out. All right, guys, so here is our printout from, from the printer. Um, I know I said to use a light grip mat on my blog, uh, but I am using my standard grip green mat and the reason why is because this one is pretty used I've used it quite a lot, so it's not very sticky But the main reason why you want to use that light grip mat is um, because this is paper So a standard grip mat like a brand new one would probably be too sticky for this piece of paper and it'll tear it Which we don't want um, But this one is pretty well used so I'm just going to continue using this for this particular project and yeah, you'll see here that there's a border that's going to be used for calibration for the machine when it makes the, the cut. Um, the maximum size that Cricut can actually do a cut is 9.25 inches, which is this distance here, okay, which is what we have. So let's put this on our mat. Now, when I put things on my mat, you can use a brayer for this. That's like one of those rolling looking brushes. Um, I don't have a brayer, so I'm gonna use my XL scraper here just to get it adhered nice and good to the mat here. It also gets rid of any bumps, which is really good because um, sometimes the paper will tend to rise when you're, when you're putting it through the machine, okay? So we just ran that through. Now we're gonna load it up. And it's going to make its cut. And you can hear it there, that's doing the calibration. You can't see it from this angle, but there's a little light that goes on underneath the, the blade. Um, and it's, it's just doing its calibration using those thick lines on the outside to do that. Now, you remember what I mentioned earlier about the bleed? You can see here, see how it's fuzzy along the edges here? That is the bleed that Cricut has added to my file, okay? Now, let's take a look at what we forgot here. That's a pretty good cut, don't you think? 
I lost my sheep there. It's stuck on the paper. But yeah, even the feet here of the duck, you can see that that's coming off. There we go. So, we've got all our pieces now. I'm gonna take those off, and I'm gonna show you the next step here, okay? So now we are going to do our laminate cut, okay? And here's where I have a Cricut hack for you. You're gonna wanna upload the second file that you downloaded, and that's the file here called Farm Animals Laminated SVG. This is the SVG file, okay? You're gonna open this up, you hit save, pretty straightforward. I've made it super easy for you. You're going to insert this image. You are not going to do anything to this. Okay. Do not adjust it. You're going to go straight to make it. And here's where it's going to make a cut. Now I'm just going to make this cut on eight and a half by 11. It's the cheapest piece of paper. I don't really feel like using a 12 by 12 for this. So I'm going to adjust this material size to eight and a half by 11, which is regular printer paper. Um, and I'm going to cut this on plain white printer paper. Okay, you will see why. Um, so let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, and let's cut this out on pr plain white printer paper. Now, once you've finished your cut, do not leave this screen. Do not cancel the screen. Do not close this screen because we're going to do a double pass. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm going to head over to the machine and let's, let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. So like I mentioned, we're going to add a plain sheet of eight and a half by 11 on here. Okay, now, do not take this paper off. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to remove all of these pieces that it just cut out, okay? If I can get in there. Now, this is gonna be our laminate template. What I mean by that is, I'm gonna take my laminate sheet here, and I'm gonna place that right on top. So laminate sheets come in, come in a double fold like this, okay? In case you've never laminated before, I know some people haven't. Um, you're gonna be putting the image in between this, and then you're gonna run this through the laminator. So we're gonna put this down I like to keep my fold at the top. I'm not quite sure if there's a right or wrong way to do this, but then you're gonna lift the top layer. So there is a bottom layer here. You're gonna lift the top layer. And you're gonna use this guide to place your images. You're gonna give it enough of a border on each side. Let's zoom in here. And see that you're gonna give it enough of a border on each side so when it cuts out that laminate it's a good seal on that got the horse there got the sheep there All right, see, we lay that all out. You're gonna carefully put this back on top. You're gonna take this off. 
and now I'm gonna run this in my laminator. So let's go do that. Okay, my machine is heated up. My blue light for ready is on. I'm gonna run this through my laminator now. Awesome. Now, remember this mat? I hope you didn't throw this out. This is very, very important. Because now what we're gonna do is lay it back on. We're gonna put it back, okay? Making sure we have a nice border. Hold it down. And we're gonna remove the top path. Then we're gonna hold this down. We're gonna remove the bottom half. And we are gonna run this back in the printer, sorry, in our Cricut, one more time. So, remember what I said, don't close that project. We are literally running the same thing through again. We've got all our pieces cut out now. And um, what all I've done is I've stuck some Velcro dots on the back here. And then stuck Velcro dots on this here so that it sticks. My daughter loves taking these on and off of the page. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I'd love if you could subscribe to the channel so you never miss another tutorial. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, if you have any suggestions for what you want to see next, leave a comment down below. All right, I will see you next time. Bye.